listening to Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. Old Man Metal's Musings is a proud part of the Screaming Demon Network. And now, without further ado... Hey, this is Old Man Metal. I hope everyone's doing well, and welcome to the sixth episode of Old Man Metal's Musings, the official podcast of Old Man Metal. And today we're going to look at the new studio setup that I've got, and then we're going to look at the top ten albums of the year for 2019, my opinion, of course. And we're going to do that part of it live, kind of. So thank you for joining me today, and thanks to everyone who watched the last episode. That was episode five. I took a look at some really good new metal from Enforced, Wraith, and Possessor. So if you haven't seen that episode, uh, go ahead and check it out. And as always, I want to give a shout out to AJ Nemesis for the theme music. That's a song called Through the Electric Mist. AJ makes great metal, and he just dropped a new album on YouTube. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. Or if you haven't listened to it, rather check it out. And I'll drop a link to his YouTube channel in the show notes so you can find it there. So I had to move out of the apartment that I was staying in. Um, repairs to the house from Hurricane Florence weren't quite complete. And the money from the insurance for relocation ran out. So... Um, I was looking at uh, how much that apartment cost to stay in, and it cost way more than I could afford to spend paying for a mortgage at the same time. So I've moved and found somewhere more affordable to live, hopefully just two or three more months, and we'll have everything squared away at the house, and I'll be able to get moved back into where I am used to living. Um, but until then, um, I'm in another space, and I've actually got a larger studio area to work with, and that's let me do some things that I wasn't able to do before. Uh, number one is proper lighting. Obviously, uh, what you're looking at now is lit a lot better than what I was able to do in the studio that I had to work with before. And getting proper lighting let me raise some of my other production values. Uh, for example, getting the camera set up properly, um, doing things like that. And so making everything look better and I'm uh, able to do one other thing that I wanted to do. And so we're going to take a look at that now. Um, I was pretty excited when I got it set up and running. So we'll just take a look at my initial reaction, see what happened. Hey, this is Old Man Metal and welcome to my new studio. And man, is it nice. I don't know how I got in a place this nice, but I told them I'm not leaving they want me out of here, they can send a SWAT team with a fire hose because I'm staying. And I mean, this is Leeds Castle in England. The cops here don't even carry guns. What are they going to do? Blow a whistle at me? Well, apparently they have these things called truncheons. I thought that was what they used to eat with before forks and knives were invented, but I guess I was wrong about that. So I'm back in the States now, uh, apparently for good, since they seized my passport. Stupid fucking felony. And this place is the nicest thing I could get. It's kind of small and a bit too modern for my taste, but it's what I could get. And it's all mine as long as they don't do a credit check. Son of a bitch. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. This place is a dump. This place was on fucking fire when I got here. I helped carry the fire hoses in. There was a dead guy back on this couch right back here. Oh, yeah, I got a rental you can stay in, man. Some fucking friend. Slumlord he is. And apparently he watches the show. Of course. Well, the good thing about being in a cave is you can't get thrown out. Because a cave is part of the earth, so it's like public domain. And I've read the law, and I know the law, and I can't be kicked out of this cave by any government, foreign or domestic. Son of a bitch! Well, that didn't work out too well. After all that bouncing around, I finally found a place that I like. It's an antique pharmaceutical lab and a museum in Romania, so the rent's nice and cheap. And it's actually got some pretty cool pieces. Some of them even date back to the 16th century, which is alchemy time. So it's pretty cool. This is where I'm going to stay for now. And I guess the main business of the day is my 2019 Album of the Year list. Uh, I do that every year on New Year's Day as a countdown on Twitter. I start with number 10 and do one tweet per hour until I get to number one. I'm going to do it the same way this year, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to try to do it live in that every hour as I do the tweet for that hour um, on the countdown, I am going to tape a segment 
and talk about the album and tape me doing the tweet. And then I'm going to put it all together and try to push it out as an episode, same day, push it out on uh, New Year's Day. And if I manage to pull that off, it'll be the first time I've shot an episode, edited it, and released it on the same day. So it's kind of an ambitious thing to try for. And if you see this get published on New Year's Day, you know I pulled it off. So we'll see how it goes. And rounding out the bottom at number 10 is Shadowlands of Darkness from Death Swarm. Ringing that bell right out of the gate is Death Swarm, a Swedish band formed by members of the OG death metal band Sarcasm. Their debut release, Shadowlands of Darkness, comes in at number 10 for 2019. Shadowlands is nine mid-length tracks of nicely done death metal that vacillates somewhat schizophrenically between subterranean autopsy-esque death doom and more up-tempo old-school Swedish death metal with the occasional thrashy chug or bolt thrower riff. This thematic psychopathy works to Death Swarm's advantage. It gives them a broader musical palette to work from, and they make great use of it. This mental patient is deranged, but he's cunning. Production is old-school sunlight sound with a bit more filth and more cavernous vocals. And the standout tracks are Let the Flames Devour, Tomb of the Universe, and We Fade at Dawn. And coming in at number 9 is Steeping Corporeal Mess from Fetid. Ever since Severed Survival dragged itself out of the primordial ooze, there have been death metal bands that wallow in the putrescent subterranean noxiousness of Autopsy's overdriven, overbearing, filthy death doom riffing, twisted macabre chord progressions, and interactive morbidity. The past half decade has seen these bands bloom in innumerable profusion, like toxic leprous cavern fungi spawning in a chaos that, as always, favors quantity over quality. Fetid's noisomely engaging debut LP places them firmly in the latter category. Great riffs and expert use of tempo change, most particularly their facility with crushing monolithic down-tempo passages, make Fetid the most noteworthy slime in the sewers of metaldom this year. Standout tracks are Reeking Within, Cranial Liquescent, and Consumed Periphery. Taking the number 8 slot, we have Reinventing Evil from Occultist, and they play really thrashy black and death metal that masterfully uses groovish and thrashy feel and tempo changes to break up the faster tremolo pick death metal riffing. The result is reminiscent of old arch enemy in places, and a few well-placed traditional metal sections range in feel from Nevermore to Danzig to Alice in Chains. The guitar work includes some really nice thrashy and traditional leads, lots of pinch harmonics, and the drums utilize mostly traditional rock and thrash structures, punctuated by double bass runs and the occasional D-beat. The vocals have a black, raspy, growlish timbre, and they're spoken or spit, and the production has a nice, raw, blackened feel. Standout tracks include I Am The Beast, Plasmodium Nocturnus, and Rise and Rain. And in at number 7, we have Lords of the Permafrost from Usurper. This is the first LP from Usurper in 15 years, and it takes home the Reunion Album of the Year award. Usurper split up in 2007 after 14 years of Black Thrash dominance, two years after the release of their last album Crypto Beast, and four years after the departure of original vocalist General Diabolical Slaughter. This risen phoenix of an album shows that they have lost nothing in the interim. Usurper's last three albums were uncharacteristically heavy feeling for Black Thrash. This, plus the vocal style and the motorhead meets new wave of British heavy metal feel of the music itself, has always drawn comparisons to Celtic Frost. This latest release is no different. Thrashy compositions that masterfully employ the full range of tempos, with some classic British sensibilities and black metal riffing that combine to add an elevating sense of grandiosity. Two-time vocalist Dan Tyrantor sounds so much like the general on this album that I had to check the credits twice to make sure it wasn't him. 
This album is sure to please Usurper fans everywhere, so if you haven't seen it, if you haven't checked it out, now's the time to do it. Standout tracks are Lords of the Permafrost, Cemetery Wolf, and Gargoyle. Taking the coveted number 6 slot is Slaves of the Shadow Realm from Legion of the Damned. The Dutch Death Thrash Masters return with their first LP in 5 years and it's exactly what you would expect, a clinic and hybrid destruction. They've lost no ground since 2014's Ravenous Plague, their current release is consistent in quality with every one of the 6 that came before it. Legion of the Damned follow a tried and true formula for musical domination mid and up-tempo thrash riffing, full of the neck snapping riff and tempo changes that make thrash great, played against tremolo pick death metal passages and those unique bouncy death thrash chugs. The drumming follows suit, it's primarily drawn from thrash, with double bass runs and other death metal bits added as needed, while the song structures themselves have more in common with death metal than they do the verse chorus simplicity of thrash. The production aesthetics are blackish and consistent with the band's past work, in sum, what more do you want? It's new work from Legion of the Damned. Standout tracks include Slaves of the Southern Cross, Warhounds of Hades, and Black Banners in Flame. Halfway to the top, at number 5, is Gravelands. Gravelands is the fourth LP from London's Possessor. It's six tracks of great stoner sludge that begins and ends with crackling flames, which is a good metaphor for the overall driven feel of the album. From the opening motorhead bass chug, there's no let up until the final track, an eight minute plus hallucinatory trek through sandblasted wastelands that caps a run of five mid-length, mid and up-tempo rockers. Possessor's stoner rock foundation is shot through with numerous influences. They seamlessly incorporate healthy doses of sludge, hardcore riffs and D-beats, expertly wielded grooves, and traditional metal leads. The result shows flashes of a lot of disparate bands from helmet to motorhead to corrosion of conformity, and it unfailingly holds one's interest. It's all propelled by solid, hell-bent trad rock drumming with the occasional D-beat, and the production is consonant with the Stoner Sludge Foundation. It's big, gritty, sun-bleached, and completely fuzzed out. Standout tracks are Backwoods, Savage Rampage, and Breathe Fire. Coming in at number four is Grunberger. Poland's Warfist have been playing their brand of Black Thrash since 2004, and 2019 saw the release of Grunberger, which is their third full-length album. Clocking in at a little over 37 minutes, Grunberger is 10 three to four minute tracks of really well done multi-tempo Black Thrash in the vein of Toxic Holocaust. Excellent, well-varied mid and up-tempo thrash riffs right atop traditional thrash drumming, bolstered by D-beats and double bass where necessary. We see very good use of crushing down-tempo sections and breakdowns for build and release of tension, an effective placement of the occasional thrash lead, groove bit, gang chorus, or crossover riff for variety. The production is nicely blackened, it's reminiscent of mid-era toxic holocaust, and the vocals are hoarse, gruff, spoken bits and shouts that remind me of deceased as much as anything else. Standout tracks include The Chapel of Death, The Burning Flames of Ignorance, and Grunberger, Drinking with the Devil. Taking the number three slot, we have Absolute Power from Wraith. Wraith's second LP is a blistering blend of black speed, thrash, and hardcore punk that draws well-deserved comparisons to Midnight and Toxic Holocaust. The songs are short, lethal verse chorus affairs assembled from speed metal riffs, thrash chugs, slower Joel Grind style passages, and sick mosh breaks, and they're packed 10 to an extended half hour long sonic beating. The rhythm section follows the formula, employing a blend of speed, thrash, and hardcore drumming, and the bluesy lead work is to die for, think midnight. There's no respite, from the first Blitzkrieg speed metal chug to the hanging outro distortion of the Misfits in cap, it's just balls out. Stripped down, souped up, and tuned for speed, this octane-guzzling metal machine is firing on all cylinders, 
and it's bearing down on you. Standout tracks are Devil's Hour, At the Stake, and The Hunt. Coming in at number two is The Harvest. This sophomore release from Germany's Inseeker is a thick slab of old-school Swedish-style death metal done right. Inseeker expertly and effectively employ all the tropes, using them to full and compelling advantage compared to the by-the-numbers feel you get from a lot of other bands in the huge current resurgence of this style. The fact that Inseeker always make interesting, seemingly perfect moves at just the right time, be it a backing thematic lead, a sample, a tremolo-picked rhythm break, that's part of what makes this album stand out from the pack. Another key is the musicianship, which is a notch above the typical revivalist old-school Sweet Death band, and it shows both in the writing and the playing. The icing on the coffin is Inseeker's vertebra snappingly skillful deployment of key bits of syncopation and groove, particularly in conjunction with downward tempo shifts. In short, this album will make you want to break things, so you've been warned. Standout tracks include Cure, Spiritual Euphoria, and Vicious Devourer. And finally, taking album of the year for 2019 is At the Walls from Enforced. Richmond's Enforced proved that they've really got what it takes with this pummeling, riff-packed beast of a debut album. Formed in 2016, Enforced play an ass-kicking blend of Blitzkrieg thrash and crossover with the occasional more nuanced Bay Area thrash riff. At the Walls is a nine-track, 28-minute verse-chorus rocket ride with classic crossover production, big cymbals, a sense of aural distance, and a dry, crunchy guitar tone. An up-tempo barrage of lethal thrash and crossover riffing is tempered by down-tempo uber chugs and sick mosh parts, and it's well punctuated by pinch harmonics and other sweet tremolo abuse. The drums support the carnage with traditional and thrash structures, using hardcore D-beats to push the action where necessary, and the requisite crossover shouts vent lyrical outrage in a world of contempt. Standout tracks, all of them. Album of the year, if you don't have it, get it. And that's it for this episode. I appreciate you joining me today and listening to me talk about my favorite metal of 2019, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please take a second and give the video a like. That's really important, and it's an easy way to say thanks for all the time that went into this podcast, which was quite a bit. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Just click the subscribe button and then click the notification bell. So, in closing for this time, I'm Old Man Metal, and thanks again for joining me today. If you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If your friends don't like it, Get new friends. Until next time, keep those horns up high. Y'all take care. listening to Old Man Metal's Musings. All material depicted is the intellectual property of the copyright holders. Any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is a goddamn shame. Thank you for joining us.